In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create a dynamic trigger system on top of the trigger system that Unity already implements. Now this isn't meant to replace every trigger that you need in your game. It's just going to replace all the basic ones. So instead of having one script for when the player steps on a box and it opens a door, and then another one for player steps here and it triggers a cutscene, and another for weather effects or changing the scene entirely, you can just use this one script. So for our starter scene, we have this large box and it has a box collider, which as you can see is set to trigger. So the first thing that we're going to do is go to our scripts folder and we're going to create a new script and we're just going to call it trigger handler. Opening it up, we're going to get rid of the start and update functions. Now there are three standard trigger functions in Unity. There's on trigger enter, on trigger stay, and on trigger exit. On trigger stay is kind of redundant, so we're not going to use that, but you can if you want to. The next thing that we're going to do is go up to the top and say using unity engine.events. Then in our class, we're going to make a new public unity event and we're going to call it on trigger enter. Go above that and you can make a public string and call it on trigger enter tag. And then we're going to go inside of the on trigger enter function and create a new if statement saying if other dot compare tag on trigger enter tag, then on trigger enter dot invoke. Now this works fine, but what if you want to do different things when different game objects enter the trigger? You'll need references to more than one tag and references to more than one event. Now in order to make this dynamic, here's what we're going to do. We're going to change our public unity event to a list of unity events and our public string to a list of strings. After that, we're going to have to delete what we already have in our on trigger enter. So we're going to say if on trigger enter dot count is not equal to on trigger enter tag dot count, well then we're just going to say debug log error on trigger enter events don't match tags. And you could probably come up with a better error for this, but that's what I'm going to stick with. And now if this happens, it means it's not set up properly. So instead of continuing on with the on trigger enter function, we're just going to go beneath this and say return. Then go beneath that, and we're going to make a for loop. You can do this by just typing for and then double clicking tab. Now despite this being a for loop, you can actually get away with having a lot of different tags on a single trigger, but I can't imagine a reason why you would need more than like four or five at most. So just a recommendation to keep it at a lower number. And then for this for loop, we're going to switch out length with on trigger enter dot count. Then inside of our for loop, we're going to say if other dot compare tag on trigger enter tag square brackets i and then on trigger enter, square brackets i dot invoke. All right, let's save that. And before we test it out, there's something else that we need to add. So the first thing that we're going to do is drag and drop our script onto our box. And then we'll add on one on trigger enter event. And we're just going to throw in our box. And for this one, we're just going to set it to game object dot set active. And we're going to have it set to false. Now all this will do is turn off this box when we walk into it. This is a reasonable thing to want your trigger event to do. And it doesn't always need to be super dynamic. So as opposed to requiring a tag to be put in here, we're going to go back into our script and fix this. So we'll go to the top of our onTriggerEnter function, and we're going to say if onTriggerEnter.count is equal to 1 and onTriggerEnterTag.count is equal to 0, then onTriggerEnter at position 0 dot invoke. After that, we're just going to say return so it doesn't go through the rest of the code. Now we can save that and test it out in play mode. The first thing we're going to test is how it works with no tag. Looks good. Now let's try it out with one tag. Our player object's tag is player. So we're going to set the tag to that and we'll test it out. Looks good. Now let's go see if our error works if we have two tags but only one event. And there it is. It works. All we need to do now is go back into our script and copy and paste everything in the on trigger enter function into the on trigger exit function. Copy and paste our two list variables and just change all these enters to exits in both these two variables and in the on trigger exit function. Don't forget the debug log error too. Okay, now to test this, instead of just turning off the game object, because that'll also turn off the box collider, we're just going to turn off the mesh renderer whenever we enter into the box and then turn it back on whenever we exit. Let's see if that works. And you'll see that it works. Like I said at the beginning of the video, this isn't going to work for every instance in which you need a trigger, but it will cover a lot of the basic ones that we make whole scripts for. That's it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. We try to answer as many as we can, and we'll see you next time.